to mess around. You get to figure out how to make things happen. And I think that that is something that as artists, as creatives, we need to reinforce with ourselves. Welcome to Learning From Experience, a podcast for college students and recent grads who want to hear directly from alumni on how they've adjusted their lives post-graduation, including personal stories of success, career readiness, and tips for navigating the real world. Created by the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Arizona State University. I'm your host, Megan Finnerty, and today I'm talking with Rain Simmons. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Megan. So excited to have you on. So Rain graduated from ASU in December of 2018 with a Bachelor's of Arts in Film and Media Studies. Since then, she's moved to New York, where she worked as a research associate, then made a big move over to Los Angeles, where she works as a junior creative producer for an apparel brand. All well, she still freelances on the side to develop her personal portfolio. Yeah. So like Megan said, I graduated in winter of 2018 um, from the Film Studies program. Woo woo. Go College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, Yeah, it's been a great time so far. I think we're four or five years on. I don't know. Can't do math. Um, But since then, it's been a really good time in New York working on the analytical side. Um, And then now I'm in LA. It's been officially a year now, which is crazy to think about. Um, But I'm working in creative production full time now. And like Megan said, freelancing on the side. So I'm really happy to be here. And I'm really excited to be talking about, you know, forging your own path. And I'm excited about it too, because on this podcast, we like to have younger alumni. But just because you're a certain amount of years out of college doesn't mean that that's really when you've started your craft. So I'd love to talk about how you forged your path and just make sure that you were always fostering the creativity that you wanted to have included in your work. So where did that start? Yeah, I mean, I could say I'm a lifelong creative, um, which I think a lot of us are and, and don't really recognize that. But it started in probably middle school, I first did a theater class and I'm a theater kid. Shout out to all the theater kids. But um, that's where I first found my uh, creative inspiration and really noted that that's something that I really like to do. So I started in the theater realm as an actor, and then I got into film and video. Um, I did my first edit on Windows Media, (laughs) which is kind of crazy to think about now. It was on an HP, which is, again, crazy to think about. Students these days have no idea what that is. No idea. (laughs) Yeah. I'm running this old program on the PC, editing these like crazy videos that are pretty much just like Ken Burn videos of photos. But, you know, that's where it started. I probably was about 12 at the time. And the creative practice that I found just came out of the theater realm and then making my own film videos, honestly, posting on YouTube sharing with friends. So that's where it started. And then it's just continued on. So yeah, it's been a great time. When you worked as a research associate, so people from our career field, that's actually kind of a different lane Uh, where a lot of times I feel like in my experience, research, it seems to not be as creative, but it has so much influence on the creative industry. Exactly. So how did you get there? So um, I was able to have an excellent mentor in the film media studies program. Shout out uh, Dr. Hemberg, Dr. Professor Julia Hemberg. It's a little inside joke, but um, had an excellent mentorship with her. And she showed me a couple of different things that I could explore after college. I had a couple of specific concerns that I wanted to address in my post-college life, particularly that I wanted to have a salary because that was most important to me, the financial stability of that. I also wanted to live in New York. So um, to foster my personal creative path and to make those connections and talk to Julia. And I was like, you know, Dr. Hemberg, this is what I'm looking for. I really want a job. I really want a salary job. What do you think? And we went over a couple of different options and I've always been interested in research. So that ended up being a suggestion that stood out to me. Um, So I worked for a company called Material and they focused on a couple of different areas of research, but I worked with a team that focused on lifestyle, apparel, luxury brands, and entertainment. So like Megan said, it definitely is not creative in the way that I was used to being creative, but it allowed me to kind of go to the beginning of this 
modern creative process that we have now, which is a lot of focus groups, a lot of research, a lot of surveys. And it allowed me to kind of see how projects get greenlit, how they are invested in, and of course, allow me to really experience like a corporate environment, get that stability and understand how to project manage. So, which in fact, like gave me the skills that I needed for my next fully creative job. So many things that you mentioned, I loved, but one of them was knowing you wanted to have a job with a salary Mm -hmm. and in the creative industry or film and media is a lot of times a gig to gig industry. And so you can say, well, how can I fulfill the things that I need and the things that I want at that same time? When you were in New York city, talk to me about how you made sure that you had more of the traditional creative outlet that you were used to of making videos photos, things like that. It all came from the community that I built in college, actually. So um, me and a friend from college moved to New York at the same time. And uh, she's also a creative. She's a director. She's a photographer. She's a lot of things. And so when we both moved out together, I was able to assist with her on our personal projects. So that was a big one. And then through her connection, she was working full time in television. And so through her connections and then some other friends that I made in New York, I was able to work on a lot of personal projects, a lot of DIY projects. I was able to be a production assistant on a couple of gigs and social media played a big role here and just publishing, meeting new people in New York and meeting people in our field. Um, And then of course, just like, really kind of personally working in my bedroom, writing a lot. And that's where I developed as a screenwriter and mainly just like making it a focus. So when it came to your screenwriting, were they things that you were sharing or was it more personal? Um, A little bit of both. I have a huge issue with sharing, which is like, as creatives, that's our whole thing (laughs) is that you want people to enjoy the work that you create. And I think that I had a lot of difficulty finding a space to share after college, especially without the structure of a class, you know, where you're submitting it, you read it with a group, your professor's reading it, you get feedback. And so um, a lot of my screenwriting work was very personal. um, And then I just shared it interpersonally with my friends. Some of my old professors read through scripts as well, but no kind of public sharing. I think I was really developing the way that I like to write. And so I just kind of wanted to get feedback on how it read. And I think now I'm at a point where I'm sharing with different organizations to read through, get feedback, um, submitting scripts to publications. But at that time, it was very much like my personal work. You know, I write something kind of blindly in the night and then reading it later, sharing it with a friend, seeing what they think. It sounds like in New York City, you had such a community built around you. What went into the decision of deciding to leave and move to California? Oh, that's a big question. The community that I built there was very much other creatives. And we just kind of supported each other in a way that was very nurturing. Um, I was able to nurture my personal practice. I was able to do some work on the side, but I really wanted to make that next step into full-time creative. And at the time, And now I have better connections in Los Angeles, Um, along with being close to Arizona. I'm an Arizona native. So um, being close to family, being close to my friends and the connections that I made in college in Arizona, and just knowing that a lot of my peers in college also made the move to Los Angeles. So coming to LA and having a more um, experienced creative network here that I could really leverage uh, was very important in the decision to move. Um, I'm definitely New York all the way, but LA has been very, very fun and good to me. That's it. That's the reason mostly to be able to step into my own creative work and producing my own creative work at a more professional level. It's much easier to do in Los Angeles. So part of working at that new level, would you mind explaining, just in case people don't know, what a junior creative producer does? So we've talked that you write, we've talked that you shoot, we've talked that you edit. So what goes into a job like yours? So I work underneath a senior creative producer. Um, So I'm a junior creative producer, which is exactly what the title 
sounds like. It's a more traditional producing role. So that means that I'm coordinating our shoots. And this is photo primarily. So this is still imagery. Pretty much what I'm doing is coordinating the all of the vendors for the shoot. So that means photographers, catering, digital technicians, but like photo assistants, talent, along with um, managing part of the budget, making sure we get invoices in, pretty much everything that we would expect a traditional producer to do or the way that you learned about it in college. Um, I also manage our samples for the shoots. So that means, you know, making sure we have the product that we need to shoot, making sure that everything's clean and organized and um, easily accessible for shoots. And along with more traditionally corporate tasks, that includes, you know, managing files, uh, coordinating any retouching or post-production needs for photos. So my job pretty much is front to back photo production, and I'm able to learn, grow, fail, but, you know, all of those things under the guidance of someone who's a lot more experienced than me. So at this position, are you feeling like this job is a little bit more you? Absolutely. I loved research. Um, It still is something that I use in this job, especially in the more corporate environment. Uh, There is absolutely still research elements that inform our creative production. Um, So it's something that I really am very happy that I got to experience. But yes, this job is absolutely more me. (laughs) And even still, I, I know that my next step after this is going to be even more me. So the next question, I want to ask you if there's a creative project that you've had so far in your career that's your favorite. It either stands out to you because it was a dumpster fire and you pulled it all together or because it was your vision all the way through. It's a project that I literally have not, it hasn't seen the light of day, but I really love animation and Ultimately, like one of my long-term goals is to is to direct an animated film. With that in mind, I want to practice the style of animation. It's stop motion is my most favorite. So I was like, okay, let's do a test project. Stop motion is notoriously hard. <laughs> and I don't know why I thought that, you know, I was going to be able to pull off a five-minute stop motion. I worked on it for about I want to say three months. And I was like, this is going to be beautiful. For some reason, I wasn't looking at dailies. I wasn't looking at anything that I shot. I hadn't put anything together. I was just shooting it. I was like, I'm just going to get it done. I had a friend come over and help me out with the modeling and help me out with, you know, some of the felt material. And they were like, wow, this is, this is looking really good, really excited. I go to the editing room with by myself and I start putting it together. And I'm like, this is an absolute mess. Um, <laughs> didn't make any sense. Wasn't visually consistent. Uh, the stop motion was really choppy. You know, we didn't have the frames. It was very much every single thing that could have gone wrong with stop motion went wrong. But the upside of this, again, I, like I said, it hasn't seen the light of day as far as like my creative community or, you know, any public publishing. But I gave it to a camp that I used to work for because it was like a silly little video just about uh, being a teen. And I gave it to this camp that I used to work for. And I was like, you know, it's something you could probably use this as like entertainment in some way. And they still use it actually as a demo video for their creative program. So it's like, it wasn't worth it for me. It's never going to see the light of day for me, but it still serves a purpose. And it's one of their, they, they told me it's one of the kids' favorite things to work on. So um, I gave them a template for how I made mine. So it came with some programming and some instructions. So I think for me, like that's the project I'm most proud of because it was an area for me to explore my capabilities and to practice something that I want to do in the future. But it also got its shine and it also served its purpose in a way that I didn't really think about when I was making it. I love that story so much. I'm like smiling over here. I feel like sometimes mistakes in the creative fields are always such a blessing and they're fun where I've never been in the science world, but like their messes have a lot of negative weight to them or there are errors. You know, if we worked in pharmacy and we're messing up, it's dangerous. Right. But then in the creative world, it can be used to motivate you or change it or it makes you laugh. We talk about so much being left on like the editing room floor, but they still took hours and hours of thought and planning and execution. 
So I just love the idea that there are kids somewhere trying to make stop motions in the same way that you, who has a lot more experience, were taking your personal time to just try out something new for a new outlet. It really was a big lesson for me. It was the first piece of work that I was not happy with that I shared with someone. And that was really important to me. Let's talk a little bit more about maybe what are the best and worst things about the creative field. I would say for producing, getting bailed on is really tough last minute, Mm -hmm. especially if the other vendors are there. That really stinks. The worst thing is that you're usually personally invested. That's my worst thing. I am usually really deep into the work that I'm producing or the work that I'm making. Um, I put a lot of like my personal weight into it and a lot of my personal feelings into it. And I think that when you do that and, you know, somebody bails or like, you know, things don't come out the way that you like them to come out, or, you know, you just have an issue on set or in post. Like, uh, I know a lot of us put a lot of our personal feelings and beliefs into the work that we make. And I think that that is the worst thing about working in creative because sometimes the work is just work. It is just that it's not, you know, your personal capabilities. It's not a judgment on who you are. It's just something that you've been working on. But the best thing about working in creative is getting to mess around. Like I think a lot, especially even as a producer, I think a lot of people think about producing as like a very like intense, like those are the guys in suits, you know what I mean? But I think producing is one of my favorite things because number one, you're in control. (laughs) And then number two, you get to mess around. You get to figure out how to make things happen. And I think that that is something that as artists, as creatives, we need to reinforce with ourselves is we really do make things happen. We bring people together. We make jobs. We are putting new things into the environment that, you know, people might not have seen before or remind them of home or do remind them of something that they've seen before in the best way. And I think that's the best thing is just being able to mess around, make things, test things out and know that you're trying and you're working on something that means something to you. For me, another thing that I would say of one of the best parts of working in a creative field is the storytelling that you get to do. You get to tell either stories that you came up with or somebody else's story and just really elevate them. Yeah. And I can't imagine what the world would look like without storytellers. Yeah. Storytelling in all forms, whether that's like in the actual creative that you're making or it's in the way that you make the creative make sense. (laughs) I think storytelling is truly one of the best too. You're so right. If you had one thing that you could say that you've learned from experience so far in your career, what would you say? I would say something I've learned from experience is to let things happen. Um, There's a lot of impetus to do and do and create and create and just get, you know, just to do things. But I think it's okay to take your time, let things happen, take the non-traditional path, and you're going to find your way, especially if it's something that you really want. If you're focused on that and your intention is that you want to work in a creative field, it's going to happen for you. And to just let yourself have the experiences that you're having, because inevitably they're going to inform your future always. So that's something I've learned from experience. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. If you're listening to Rain Story and you loved it and you want to connect with her more, you can reach out to her on Instagram at Rain Sim, R-A-Y-N-E-S-I-M-M. Or to hear more alumni advice, head to our episode page wherever you listen to podcasts, check out the college's YouTube channel or visit thecollege.asu.edu slash L-F-E podcast. Thank you for having me. See you next time.